Another graph physics video presentation. Okay, close enough. Graph science here on YouTube. So I sort of, uh, last month has been, um, you know, it's sort of a spectacular in a sense that I've really, you know, nailed a lot of these notions in physics and demonstrated that they're just not sensible ways of describing the reality. And it goes all the way back to things like um, calling it the speed of light rather than the speed of force. You know, this, these little ideas, but they're really big. Um, the idea that the universe, the only one that matters, is the little one. The electrons and protons have to move first. They're what's running the universe. They're the only place where something is actually happening. The rest is just emergent stuff. The rest is just the fact that when you roll the dice, the dice end up in a position. Well, you know, we know the position doesn't have anything to do with anything other than where the dice have been and what path they took to get there and what they hit and all of that stuff. Uh, the photon has to be kind of known, even if you want to play around with wave-particle duality, you have to kind of know it's a composite object. It's made of a frequency. A frequency implies that the photon can't be absorbed as one thing instantaneously. It has to be absorbed as a, something that happens over a period of time to some object. And then you realize the polarization of the light is rather huge. So you know it kind of has to be happening to more than one electron. That more than one thing is actually producing this composite object. It can't be thought of as a photon, as a, you know, this blob. Uh, it's just not, it's not reasonable. The evidence is convincing and complete in terms of demonstrating it's just not a rational way to look at what these things are. So, and, uh, you know, and I've sort of pointed this out through, you know, just completely debunking the, you know, nonsensical, um, extraordinary, wooey, silly explanations they provide for the mechanics of the two-slit experiment and how something as simple as just understanding that these composite photons, <clears throat> the pieces of them, can be sent to different locations and that you can take different photons, break pieces off of them, and put the pieces back together in another location back in phase and you'll re make your photon. I mean, that simple explanation works. It fits the observations, and their own math already concedes it. So, you know, these shouldn't, uh, these should already be part of the conversation they have about their physics, and yet they never even talk about these subjects. They never even concede or uh, give any indication that they understand that, yes, the, you know, it can be understood as a mechanical system, as physics, not as a bunch of extraordinary events in an extraordinary universe. So anyway, Sabim, Hassan Felder, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, sorry, I just, you know, names. Um, you know, it's not an excuse for messing up people's names, but it just happens. Unless you hear it enough times, you know, it just, just turns into mush. So, um, yeah, I was uh, intrigued and originally thought, oh, here's a, a brain not controlled by crap. And, uh, but yeah, it's completely controlled by crap. Uh, you know, her, her complaints with physics are obtuse and minor. And um, yet she's thought of as an outsider almost in the physics community. Um, a physicist, you know, committing some um, real crimes against the authority, and yet she's so compliant to the Borg, you know, the religion. And she's just a Methodist, you know, instead of a Catholic. One of the most common misunderstandings. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, volume again. Uh, I really have to do that ahead of time, Gary. Gotta get that right. Sorry, I'm just... See, the brain has to fix the brain. There's no other thing that can do it. Just, just you know, physical things change physical things. It doesn't... Nothing gets wooed into a new place. 
understandings about quantum mechanics that I encounter is that quantum mechanics is about small things in short distances. The whole universe is about small things in short distances. So that's what produces everything. So yes, the big universe is about the small universe ultimately. But the idea of quantum effects on large scale objects are so um, negated by... See, I would argue that all this is scatter. All these phenomena are caused by scatter. You know, that's anything that has these wide probabilities, only has these wide probabilities because of the probabilities of scatter. The, the fact is that you can hit something in a lot of different ways, and hitting it in different ways gets a different outcome. Um, so, but yes, the, you're not going to see um, ESP on the large scale universe. You're not going to see the Earth have an entangled Earth, you know, Vulcan. <laughs> You're not going to see that happen. It's about atomic spectral lines, electrons going through double slits, nuclear decay, and so on. So, again, electrons going through double slits is another statement. It's just so strange because conceptually it doesn't make any sense. Again, electrons are so small. And how do you make slits for something as small as an electron? See, the photons are big because of their polarization. But you really can't confine an electron. And the only way you can confine it is to make slits out of atoms. And atoms have electrons on their surface. So how can you possibly make some sort of slit experiment out of you know, using electrons and pretending you're making slits that could be relevant to an electron. An electron just sees electrons and protons. It doesn't see surfaces. I mean, you know, it's 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 so bad, you know, that they just throw this stuff out. Like you're supposed to believe you can make a slit that an electron could see. Like, like it sees, hey, there's steel there and there's steel on that side. That's not what an electron sees. I mean, so, you know, it's, there's millions of miles between the electron it sees and the, and the proton, you know, that's the you know, core of the atom. Um, it doesn't have any notion of that proton, really, you know, compared to the influence of the electron that it sees and that it wants to avoid. There's a realm of big things where stuff behaves like we're used to, and then there's a realm of small things. So she uses this background image, this cliche garbage image that doesn't have anything to do with the double slit experiment really. There's two patterns, this two wave theory doesn't work. Um, you know, I have to go back to the Feynman book, you know, of his lectures because he has some drawings in there. You know, he doesn't talk in the lecture as much about the wave theory. Uh, he doesn't like waves much, um, but he does draw it, and he draws the classic cliche, two waves make the pattern thing, and it just doesn't. It's just a fake. I mean, it's just, this is fake, you know. This is just, this is a, a lawyer using lawyer tricks, okay? This isn't being fair to the truth. This is dishonest, and it's and it's for a purpose, you know, to imply that this is settled science, that we know this is what things do, and we know why it does it, and the evidence doesn't point to good reason to believe. What quantum weirdness happens? It's an understandable misunderstanding because we do not experience quantum effects in daily life. But yeah, yeah, that's right. We don't, and there's no reason to think it's happening to the smaller bits either. You know, it's just made up because we can't really see them. And so instead of recognizing that in our real world, you know, we're, you know, we don't, we don't live in a world of electrons and protons, and we don't just bang into two different kinds of things. But if that's all there were for us, we could maybe possibly understand how our direction is going to be constantly changed based on these fields that we have to travel through the, as a ping pong paddle we'd really understand the world if the only thing that could influence us was ping pong balls and how many there are uh, coming right for us. It's wrong, and in this video I will explain why. Quantum mechanics applies to everything regardless of size. And so again, it, it just doesn't in any rational way. There's no Heisenberg, I don't have any Heisenberg problem going through two slits. I don't have any of the None of the, the things that are supposed to be happening on the 
small scale have any correlation to anything real happening on the big scale. So you can't make it, you, you can have an example like an electron, you could compare it to an asteroid and it could be a fairly rational comparison. You could say it has a trajectory, it has a momentum, um, it has a destination kind of set and that you can influence that destination with other forces. Um, so there's a correlation, but there's no correlation between you know, the mechanical way we function, big things function, and the way uh, little things function in terms of their definition of the physics. The best example of a big quantum thing is the sun. The sun shines... So this is more blah, 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 blah. You know, first they tell us why it shines, you know, because they have a theory. And again, it's their interpretation of the evidence. It's not the evidence. They're not going to tell you what the evidence is. They're going to tell you their interpretation. Now, all there is in the in the circumstances that we know to, to smash two hydrogen atoms into a and to make a, a helium nucleus requires a certain amount of energy going in. You have to have a certain amount of momentum. And they assume that this requires you to do something called tunneling, you know, where something has to do this special quantum thing for this to happen when again the, there are available explanations that it could just be that the two atoms have to hit each other the right way that is there's electrons and there if the if, if I'm showing you a hydrogen atom um, nobody's going to see the same thing so like an elephant it has a front and it has a back there's a part where the electron is and there's a part where the electron isn't there's a part that looks quite proton-y and there's a part that looks a lot electron-y. So depending on your point of view is going to be depending on whether or not you're going to be able to consolidate those two hydrogen atoms. They have to be turned the right way. Thanks to nuclear fusion which relies on quantum tunneling. Yeah. So again they say it relies on this magical tunneling thing when there's no you don't have any hard good reason to believe that there really isn't any reason to say there's not a rational explanation have to fuse two nuclei together even though they repel each other because they are both positively charged so tunneling this would not work and the sun is certainly so they that's they so they say again and there can be explanations of where you have enough energy where they're moving quickly enough where it happens a certain percentage of the time and that's all it requires they don't need any of this magic small. Uh, you may say that doesn't count because the fusion itself only happens on short distances. It's just that the sun contains a lot of matter, so it's big. Okay. Yeah, that's and it's true. I mean, obviously the quantum effect doesn't affect the sun itself. So obviously the sun's properties aren't defined by the fact that, you know, if you're going to make a list of its properties, you're not going to, it's like me bothering to say, well, a list of your properties is you have a pancreas. I'm not going to be bothered doing that. Here's another example. All that matter around you, air, walls, table, what have you, is only there because of quantum mechanics. Without quantum mechanics, atoms would not exist. In oh, so this is more nonsense about their description of an atom. So their description of an atom is, is some electron spinning around something and then somehow it's losing energy. So again, I'll show you, this is just so trivial um, and, and so assumptive. And it's like, this is their foundation. It's this assumptive, trivial, you know, just, you know, and so provable that that can't be the right explanation. Indeed, this was one of the major reasons for the invention of quantum mechanics. In the so, so here, you know, she's admitting this is one of the reasons why we invented this nonsense, and here's the nonsensical reason. And I, you know, like I said, I, I, I want to be able to debunk it as as reasonable, without working very hard. First place, you see, without quantum mechanics, an electron circling around the atomic nucleus would emit electromagnetic radiation. So there, she just did it. So she just said to us that that little thing spinning around that little thing, okay, this tiny little atom with this electron spinning around it produces a photon. She said it, it produces electromagnetic radiation that it itself is producing electromagnetic radiation. This one little tiny thing creates a whole thing. 
you know, and again, I would argue that no, all it creates is a tiny piece of the whole thing. You need a whole bunch of those things doing that to create a photon. Photons don't pop out of single atoms, and their polarization is glaring evidence. The fact is you can't make a photon that can go through both polarizing filters. You just can't do it. So obviously it's not something that can have no polarization. That is, there's, it can't be located, can't have pieces in different locations in space. Um, it doesn't work as a theory. Single, fo single electrons cannot be producing photons. So it's just a stupid assumption and um, the evidence doesn't point to it being true and they just cite it as if we proved it. And we have very, very good reason to believe when they don't have good reason at all. Lose energy and fall into the... So, so again, saying it would lose energy, just like I said, they're almost saying that the Earth would lose energy because it, um, you know, it's, it does actually reflect light, let's say. <laughs> you know, when it's, say if I was looking at the solar system, watching the Earth rotate, I could argue that it reflects more energy to me when it's moving towards me than away from me. And then I could make the argument, well, it just created a electromagnetic radiation, a wave, right? Making It's making gravity waves. You could make the argument, oh, somehow that should stop the Earth from moving because it's making energy. It's making a gravity wave, an on and off signal is being sent. Because when it's going that way, I'm seeing less photons reflect off of it. And when it's coming right towards me, I'm seeing more photons reflect off of it. So therefore, it must be... In it, more energy is being um, thrown at it in the direction it's moving. More energy is hitting it. And it's a fact. <laughs> okay, it is. Um, so why shouldn't the Earth be dragged to a halt? Nucleus very quickly, so atoms would be unstable. Quantum mechanics. So again, this is the this is how how again you're going to call it immature, um, superficial, trivial. Um, this is that's not a very good science. She she just made a proclamation. There's no way the electron could orbit. And I don't think the electron's orbiting. I think it's magnetic, you know. So I think the electrons are in positions where they're in tension. And you know, that's controlling uh how atoms behave is a tension um between the positive and negative forces. Um you don't need them to orbit explains why this does not happen. It's because the electrons are not particles that are localized at a specific point. They are... Oh, see, so, so, so they say, so again, this is just so silly to have this conversation about, well, we're going to for force you to accept all of these premises, all of these axioms that we've declared, you know, we've decided <gasps> this is the physical truth, even though they don't really have any evidence they can show you, any broad big pile of evidence to say this is a good theory this is just religion she's just telling me why i should believe in jesus instead described by wave functions which merely tell you the probability for the electron to be at a particular point at so again do you really think that's how the universe works that things don't have a location and that there's some probability god somewhere saying no, it's on its way going everywhere and just hasn't decided which way it's going and where it is really. It's here and 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 here, 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 here. And, you know, uh, sometime in the future we'll decide where it actually is. I, I mean, too silly. For atoms, this probability distribution is focused on shells around the nucleus. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. It's really focused on the fact that it's a really small thing and we can't detect it. We have no instruments that can detect the tiny movements in the tiny amount of time they move and the little bit of vibration that they do. And these are just approximations where, yes, you know, when we can get a tiny glimmer of where it might be, this might be the, the, the view you would get. Um, but it has nothing, you know, it doesn't imply that it doesn't each time you look, it would be in an actual different location. It's not at any time in all of these locations. And we never see them in all of these locations. So again, this is just their, this is just their story about how Jesus walked on water. 
and it's like this, you know, and it's kind of a fake synthetic story, but she's not going to show us any real picture of anything real. She's going to show us these composite images over a whole bunch of different uh, experiments, and this is what the general outcome is over a bunch of experiments. Yeah, well, I can do the same thing with rolling dice or roulette wheels or anything else. I can show you anything that has an outcome that's variable, and I can show you a picture of all the variations. So what? These shells correspond to different energy levels and are also called the orbitals of the electron. But I find that somewhat misleading. It's not no, the whole thing is misleading in the sense that she's, they, she, she's implying that they have really good evidence for any of these conclusions. And their evidence is lousy. And when they show you the evidence, like the two-slit experiment, you can see they can't even explain a, a simple experiment accurately. They start distorting the truth and adding to it and grandizing it, you know. They start making a complete mess out of something very simple. Like the electron is actually orbiting as in going around in a loop. I get frequently asked... So, so, so again, it's just, you know, the, these words don't mean anything anymore. She'll say the word, but I don't necessarily mean it's doing that. Well, yeah, I used that example to prove something. You know, I said if it's orbiting, it can't orbit because then, you know, it would lose energy. And I made this whole argument based on orbiting. And now I'm going to say, well, I didn't mean orbiting, you know. And so I here I I proved one argument and now I've completely changed the goalpost. I've completely changed the game we're playing. So one minute she's winning because they're playing football. And, you know, the next minute she's winning because now she says she's playing soccer. Why this is not a problem for the orbits of planets in the solar system. Yeah, see, see, so now she just changed the rules. Isn't that, isn't that convenient? Why don't the planets emit radiation and fall into the sun? The answer is, they do. But in the case of the solar system, the force which acts is not the electromagnetic force as in the case of the atom, but the gravitational force. No, so again, the electromagnetic force isn't the one that's going to cause <clears throat> the attraction and repulsion between protons and, and electrons. I mean, uh, um, electrons and protons is not an opposition force so there's no way it opposes its movement like with the earth crashing into a bunch of dust and other materials those are that's a real circumstance it's really getting hitting more dust in front of it than it hits behind it so it's obviously being it's it's in some way forced to drag its way through a bunch of crap constantly and it's just a minor amount of crap is the simple truth it doesn't degrade its orbit instantly because you know it's a it's a minor amount of crap but it's a fact that it will over time degrade its orbit correspondingly the radiation that's emitted when planets go around the sun is not electromagnetic radiation but gravitational radiation which so more nonsense the gravitational radiation what what is that uh, bent space waves again there's no why use the word gravitational radiation when you don't think gravity is made by radiation so again this is all so bizarre you know the vocabulary is so broken means gravitational waves these carry away energy and this indeed causes planets to lose energy but uh, prove it you know there's, there's absolutely no evidence that the any gravitational wave uh, forces planets to lose energy that in any way the gravitational attraction is at all um you know or that, that there is anything in that bearing that has any friction at all that you can't show how there's any friction in the actual being pushed from the outside and being forced to travel the circular path. There's zero friction in that. And the only friction you can find for the Earth is the fact that, yes, it hits more photons moving forward. It's just a fact. It hits more. More photons hit it in the front than hit it in the behind because it's going some velocity all the time and that velocity relative to the energy in the universe it's always hitting more of it forward than it hits from behind and that will degrade its orbit but that's the only thing you're going to find you know in dust and hydrogen atoms and all the other crap that might be still you know all the the shit the sun is emitting i mean the sun is emitting a cloud of energy and the Earth is traveling through that cloud, so it's hitting more of the cloud in the forward direction than it's hitting from behind it. 
and so over time it's going to be that's that's the only friction that exists they can't account for this other magical gravity friction there's no friction in gravity gradually shrinks the radius of their orbits however the gravitational force is much much weaker than the electromagnetic force so this effect is extremely small and it does not noticeably affect planetary orbits the effect can become large enough to uh, <clears throat> but this is like making an argument that an atom lasts for zillions of years by comparison to the number of times the electron is orbiting let's say a proton so if you calculate it out to be real near just count by the number of orbits um, you know the effects on electrons clearly aren't the same effects because they wouldn't you know atoms would decay very fast even if you gave them just the minor um, flaw of having to of, of just the dust and the other crap that the earth the earth will never travel as many rotations as the average electron theoretically around an atom again I don't believe electrons are orbiting uh, protons observable if you have a system of two stars that circle each other at short distance in this case the energy loss from gravitational radiation will cause the stars to spiral into each other so she did a video basically pointing out how you know LIGO really hasn't proven they did it that they really haven't proven that they accounted for every sound the universe can make or that they accounted for all the coincidental um, noises they would hear in the zillions of noises they've collected so you know she basically pointed out how there's reason not to think this was you know perfectly done complete science and yet here she is using it <laughs> what's I mean besides being duplicitous what the hell is that Indeed, this is how gravitational waves were first indirectly confirmed, for which a Nobel Prize was awarded in 1993. For this oh, please. So it's, they were confirmed with something other than LIGO in 1993. I, I, sorry, I didn't hear about that. <laughs> I'll have to go find that, I guess. So, 93 gravitational wave proof. Okay, I have to go find that, I guess brings up another question, doesn't it? Why aren't the orbits of planets quantized like the orbits of electrons around the atomic nucleus? Again, the answer is, they are. Yeah, they are based on proximity. So again, they'll destroy each other if their orbits, you know, there's, they, they can't, like, like almost the, the magnetic argument you could make, um, there's places where stuff can't exist because it's going to be attracted to one line or the other line and it's always going to go in one of those directions so over time it'll have to be in these certain locations because everything not in those locations gets hit by some opposing force it's just that for such large objects, the shells are so close together that the gaps between them are unmeasurably small and the wave function of the planets is very well localized. So well, it really is pretty, it's pretty dramatic. I mean, actually, the solar system is really big for nine little planets. It's a lot of space between the planets, a lot of space. Oh, it is an excellent approximation to treat the planets as balls or indeed points moving on curves for the electron in an atom on the other hand so again they're really not moving on curves so they're going straight and they're just being uh, more than one force is being applied their momentum is being altered by adding momentum from gravity this approximation is terribly bad so all the matter around us is evidence that quantum mechanics works because all the matter around us is evidence okay well whatever it really isn't and uh, i mean all the facts you know really taken seriously again the fact that a, the polarization of a photon is gigantic thousands of atoms across and uh, there's no good reason to believe that that gigantic thing interacts with a single electron um no good reason at all i mean that's a glaring fact the fact that your two-slit mass is basically scatter math off the surfaces, clearly.
the surfaces are the point sources absolutely no reason to believe in any of these waves or to believe the wave centers can be rationally placed anywhere in the experiment at all waves don't work as an explanation and there's no reason to believe photons have anything to do with anything called a wave it's necessary to make atoms stable does that finally convince you that quantum mechanics no you certainly haven't convinced me um with this cursier view of the reality why don't you explain how the big giant photon the collection the composite object clearly it it has to be produced over a period of time it has to be consumed over a period of time as elements that's what frequency is Frequency means something that comes in period of time. So there's no way to get around that simple truth, um, that you can't have a frequency without having elements making the frequency. Why don't you explain how your theory that a photon is a blob, uh, like a planet, and that it has a frequency. Why don't you make how, how that makes any sense? isn't just about small things uh you may say but all this normal matter does not look like a quantum thing well then how about lasers lasers work by pumping energy into a crystal or gas that makes the electrons mostly populate unstable energy levels this is so i don't know exactly how she's going to say this is evidence of the big universe lasing it doesn't call it population inversion. If one of the electrons drops down to a stable state, that emits a photon which causes another electron to drop and so on. This process is called stimulated emission. Lasers? Yeah, it's just where you're just creating a, a bunch of things in one direction and pushing them all in one direction. So you're taking light, you're basically producing in all directions and you're forcing it to all go in the same direction but there's no magic to it. Then amplify the signal by putting mirrors around the crystal or gas. The light that is emitted in this way is coherent and very strongly focused. And that's thanks to quantum mechanics. Well, it really isn't, and it really isn't, okay? The beams diverge a lot, okay? So we can't, still can't make a laser beam that can go any kind of distance without spreading. So it's obviously not a perfect system. And uh, LIGO had a, uh, still has problems with the idea of you can't, you can't get perfectly in phase photons. They're not all perfectly in phase. And that's a problem. Because if the atomic energy levels were not quantized, this would not work. Now you say this still doesn't count because it's not weird. Isn't quantum theory supposed to be weird? Okay. Well, frankly, yeah, that's one of the reasons why you'd hardly say lasers are quantum. This is really not. There's nothing, you don't need a Heisenberg principle to understand how a laser works. So you won't wit. Enter Zeilinger. Anton Zeilinger is famous for, well, for many things, actually. He's been on the hot list for a Nobel Prize for some while. But one of his most famous experiments is showing that entanglement between photons persists for more than 100 kilometers. Zeil so uh, what did she just say? What the hell? I wish I could change the entanglement. So it's an entanglement? So th there's no photon entanglement experiments. There, there really are only left and right hand gloves. These are all experiments done based on the polarization of photons and the fact that the photons are sent out of phase when they're created. I mean, I could make this look the simple argument. If I wobble an electron, well, one side is seeing the on part coming towards me reflecting more light right so if I move towards you I reflect more light if I move away from you really fast I reflect less light and become invisible well obviously if somebody's looking at it from behind they're going to see it exactly out of phase where one person sees more light the other person sees the guy getting visible so you know the right and left hand glove explanation works just fine Zeilinger and his group did this experiment between two of the Canary Islands in 2008. They produced pairs of entangled photons on La Palma, sent one of each pair to... Ten so she is a saying entangled. She just has a little trouble with that word. Uh, <laughs> <you know. clears throat> 
And so you people all fall for this. You really think this is what they did. You know, the Alan aspect was bad enough in the sense of saying, you know, I, I, you know, 20 meters away from here, this source, he could detect exactly the same photon that was over here. You know, those, those kind of, kind of bold claims. You really think these guys can send two photons, Jim and Bob, and they can collect Jim and Bob over here? Sure they can. Riff, which is 144 kilometers away, and let the other photon do circles in an optical fiber on La Palma. When they measured the polarization on both photons, they could unambiguously demonstrate that they were still entangled. So, so uh, you know, this is realistic in what respect? Because we know, look, even in a fiber optic cable, right? You know, every time there's a reflection off the side of the cable, the light is changed. Okay, so every reflection changes its polarization in a sense. Because, you know, it's like glare from the sun. It's polarized. That's why polarized glasses eliminate the glare, because the glare is polarized this way. You know, it's in line with your vision, and that's why they put the filters this way, you know, because it blocks the glare. Yeah. So, I mean, on its basic surface, what sense does this make? We, we know fiber optic cables means billions and trillions of interactions with the surface of the cable. I mean, what's... Come on! Quantum mechanics is most definitely not a theory for short distances. It's just that the weird stuff that's typical... Okay, so again, the weird stuff, the, just the completely exaggerated experiments, just, to, you know, again, they can't tell you the truth about any of these experiments and how they're performed. LIGO is insanely complicated. It's supposed to be this simple thing. We just shoot two beams of light and we measure how long it takes the two beams of light to travel a distance. And then we use that to make a determination. And again, they've now they're bouncing it off 1,600 mirrored surfaces, telling us all this stuff and telling us we know exactly how far the little thing called a photon went. You know, we can compare these two beams. I mean, it's just ridiculous. For quantum mechanics, entanglement and quantum uncertainty and the ability of particles to act like waves are, under normal circumstances, really, really tiny for big and warm objects. I'm here using the words big and Yeah, it's right. We're not going to be able to make any wave of soldiers do anything that shows any kind of entanglement or Heisenberg or the soldiers think they're all in different places and they don't know where they are. and. We can't make any wave of anything in our real world that will behave in this silly manner that you're saying these things behave in on the small scale. So you're just saying that you trust us. We're going to tell you what the little universe is, going to, is doing. You can't see it, but we can imagine it. <laughs> you know, and that's and that somehow we have we have secret devices, you know, very complex secret devices that allow us to see all these mysteries. Bullshit. They have made up crap. Well, the way they have distorted the evidence clearly, just like the two slit experiment, where they cut the excess, the extra pattern off, where they show you only this little bit, and they, you know, they clearly they they sit there and have mined the evidence. They've sat there and said, "What evidence supports conviction? We don't care about the truth. All right, we don't care about being honest." You know, we'll have any kind of, you know, homeless drug addict to, you know, guy will say anything for a $10 bill. We'll have him testify. You know, we'll cheat in any way we can <laughs> the truth and integrity and all those things just to, to sell our propaganda. You know, and it's just their religion. I mean, they might as well just make, you know, f just fake shrouds of Turin and things, you know, they're just trying to, they're just trying to create some sort of fake evidence saying that Jesus exists. Here's a little vial of his blood. Physicists do. So warm means anything more than a few degrees above absolute zero, and big means anything exceeding the size of a molecule. As I explained in the previous video in the series, it's decoherence that ruins quantum effects for big and warm objects, just because they frequently interact with other things, like air or radiation. But if you control the... 
Yeah, well, you can't control any of that, so that's the part that's silly. You can't control the microwave background radiation and all the other crap that's out there and blah, 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 blah. And so all this crap about your entanglements, they can't exist because even gravity is affecting something all the fucking time. Environment of an object very closely. If you keep it cool and in an ultra high vacuum, you can slow down decoherence. This way, so again, it's, it's you know, can you slow it down to stop or not existing? Again, how much of this can you actually stop without resynthesizing the same thing? Because you can't eliminate the real universe because then you eliminated charge and you eliminate all the things that actually make things behave. So this whole notion that you can create some isolation chamber is kind of nonsense. It's like thinking you can hide from gravity by digging a hole into the earth and go deeper and deeper. Well, no, you can't really hide from it because all that pressure down there is gravity. Okay, it's the consequence of gravity. Gravity is what's making the pressure as you go deeper and deeper and the pressure gets stronger and stronger and you have to use thicker and thicker steel to keep the walls of your tunnels open uh, you know it's because of gravity that is the force of gravity getting to you have been able to demonstrate quantum behavior for big molecules the record holder is presently a molecule made of about 2,000 atoms or about 40,000 protons neutrons and electrons an entirely different type of large quantum states are both yeah whatever so you trust them you trust them to tell you what a blob of whatever 40,000 electrons did or some other thing when they can't tell you what two slits do accurately Einstein condensates. These are clouds of atoms cooled to very low temperature where they combine to one coherent state that has quantum effects throughout. For both Einstein... It is just says you again, just says them quantum effects. They read each other's minds, they're entangled, they're superimposed, you know, all this stuff. They don't have any pictures of that. Just crap. And condensates the record is presently at a few hundred million atoms. Now, you may still think that's small, and I can't blame you for it. But the relevant point is that there is no limit in size or weight or distance where quantum effects suddenly stop. In principle, everything has quantum effects. Yes, no, it's only because everything has been given a fake frequency by these fakers, right? These people who just completely perverse, you know, just a. a you know, a simple thing that existed, momentum, this idea that something has a certain substance to it, mass, and it has a velocity. And when you add those two things up, it means this is how much of a force impact it'll have. So its, it's force identity is essentially defined by its mass and its velocity. And they converted it into this notion that somehow frequency is mass and velocity. Somehow frequency is velocity or frequency is mass when it can't be either one of those things. And where frequency, yes, obviously the higher the frequency, the more stuff happening in a smaller amount of time. So obviously it would have more energy in an absolute sense. But the correlation, the fact that there's a correlation between frequency and momentum doesn't make it equal to each other. And that's the silly part here. This notion that when they gave electrons frequency, even though they don't have a frequency, they just gave them one, <laughs> you know, it forced it on them. Um, you know, that's where they just wooed everything. So they gave us one too. And because we're hugely massive by comparison to an electron, uh, a single electron. Obviously, our frequency is preposterously high. Frequencies that go well beyond any kind of Planck, you know, um, limits. Even you. It's just that those effects are so small you don't notice. This video was brought to you by Brilliant, which is a website on which you can... I wonder how much they pay her. So, you know, you wonder, you know, I'm offering $1,500. Fifteen hundred dollars to one of these, you know, hundred thousand plus subscribed um, physicists to defend their physics, you know, for an hour of their time. You know, they don't have to do these commercials and the solicitation. They don't have to. But I wonder how much Brilliant's paying them. I mean, uh, is she making fifteen hundred dollars from Brilliant? 
I mean, how much per subscription to Brilliant is she getting a cut? I mean, you know, what what is? I wonder what the financing of this is. So she's willing to do this, you know, to s essentially sell her soul to the commercial enterprises, um, <clears throat> but she's not willing to um, defend her crackpot, silly, made-up, woo pile of shit religion. Okay, <laughs> from being interrogated by the real evidence take interactive courses on a large variety of topics in science and mathematics in yeah you can be full of shit as i am and just give yeah, but they'll probably tell you the same lies i've been telling you you know they'll show you the two slit experiment without the complex pattern and they'll tell you it's two waves because young said so in 1801 <laughs> you know it doesn't work it doesn't explain the experiment it can't have it doesn't has a it doesn't have a hope of succeeding and if you do it honestly, mathematically, you'll find out the point sources are right on the surfaces. So that doesn't make any sense for waves. And it makes all the sense in the world if you understand that photons can be scattered. Including quantum mechanics. Brilliant has courses covering both the mathematical basis of quantum mechanics as well as... Qu there's, there's no mathematical basis. It's, it's freaking probability math, which, you know, obviously you can... You can understand by filling a jar full of beans and just counting how many ones how many beans are black and how many beans are white quantum objects quantum computing quantum logic and yeah more crapola like it makes some sort of sense to talk about how ambiguous bits somehow allow you to do the same equation 17 times in the same time you know it's it's all this ghosty magic crap you know I use the same electron to do 17 different things. You know, it's like, it's like you wash the floor, uh, you know, you wash 17 floors at the same time with the same mop. I mean, it's silly shit. Many of the key experiments in quantum mechanics. I have spent some time browsing the courses offered by Brilliant, and I think they are a great starting point if you want to really understand what I explained in this video. To right, so if you want to hear about Jeebus and his magical adventures in the you know Mushiverse, um, you know go go to our catechism, you know, and learn how to respect the nuns. I mean, this is just a religion. Support this channel and learn more about Brilliant. Go to brilliant.org slash Sabine and sign up for free. The yeah, free well, how much did they pay you for this? What is, it? what is it? How much? I'm curious. Come on, why don't you tell us? You know, all you, you shysters. What, what are you getting paid to, you know, do this horse shit? Just 200 people who go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching. Oh, I just love the idea of coupons. I love that I get it cheaper so somebody else has to pay more. I love doing that because I'm a human being and I love somebody else getting ripped off. That's one of my favorite things is me getting advantages other people don't have. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're voting for when you vote for this commercial enterprise bullshit. Somebody always has to pay for it. If somebody gets a coupon, somebody has to pay for it. All right? There's no free lunches here. You pay less, somebody else has to pay more. And you think you're nice people because you vote for that system? No, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm as cheap as the next I'm be. I'm always going to try to get my mind mind cheap, right? But I'm not voting for it. I'm not saying that's the way the system should be. No, we shouldn't do it that way. We shouldn't have this nonsense. I have to put Sabim in my title to get my little percentage off. Why she gets paid for it, right? So if somebody else is paying for, not you know, they're paying not only for your coupon, but they're paying her too. I mean, fuck. We all pay for it. All of us have to pay for this shit. Don't you understand? It's not free. We're all paying for it. See you next week. So anyway, whether you watch the commercial, whether any... No, the fact is it was paid for by the company and they have to pay the bills and that means 
They have to either not pay their employees as much or they have to rip their consumers off to pay these bills. So whether you see the commercial, whether you block the commercial, blah, 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 all this bullshit, it doesn't matter. You're still paying for it. Oh, shit. Anyway, I mean, people can't even get these simple economic things right. I mean, Germany is where they started with all these, you know, it's not a very sunny place, frankly, and they put all these solar panels on roofs. I mean, so fucking stupid. <laughs> you know, such a waste of technology. All right, so I call that a video. Just, uh, it's just sad and irritating that this is the best the internet can produce. <laughs> you know, the, it really, I have done it. I've done my job. I've shown this all to be just a preposterously silly religion, and that's all it is. Physics is the is a, just a new religion. It's lost all grounding, so it's lost all focus on anything like a detail or like a foundational concept. They're just lost in their fables. They're they're on the seventeenth millionth edition of what has just become a fucking poo story, you know, with Tigger 2. I mean, that's all it is. It's just a little silly story they're made up. Anyway, uh, I have to get to the save button. Okay, so till the next time and such. If the icon worked, I wouldn't have to do this. It's still broken. So if anybody knows how to get that fucking see the little icon over here should have a little red dot on it or do something to indicate it's recording. It just doesn't do it. That's really irritating.